Now, counseling is difficult because most people have a tendency to talk at people and to teach people. Ushauri ni mgumu kwa sababu watu wengi wana mazoea ya kuongelesha watu na kuwafundisha tu watu. The idea of counseling is that we listen to people and know where they are and guide them step by step to change. Swala hili na kuhusu ushauri linatuhitaji sisi tuchukue muda mwingi wa kuwasikiza watu hatua kwa hatua na tuweze kuelekeza kiwango hiki hadi kiwango kile. Counseling is not just good for one to one counseling. It's also helpful if we understand counseling is helpful to our preaching. Ya kwamba ushauri sio tu wakati umepata na mtu mmoja kwa mwingine lakini pia katika kipindi cha mahubiri unaweza kutumia katika kushauri. Okay. Now, I'm using an illustration. Anatumia mfano huu. A couple come to you and they are fighting against each other. Wanakuwa wakija kwako na wamekuwa wamepigana. If a pastor doesn't know how to counsel and just teach, this is what he might do. Na kama mchungaji hana habari yoyote kuhusu ushauri, atajiuliza sasa hii nitafunisha nini? He will tell the couple, you have to repent to God so that God will forgive you. Ataanza na kusema, "Eh, ndugu, mtungu, Mungu awasamehe." And then you love each other and pray together. Aya sasa mpendane Mungu naomba pamoja. If you don't forgive each other, God won't forgive you. Kama utasamehe mume wako kama mke wako Mungu atakusamehe. So forgive each other and go home and pray together. Anzeni kusameana saa hii ninaombea na mkienda nyumbani muende kuomba pamoja. And your problem will be overcome. Na mtashinda hii tatizo na ujui chanzo. Let me ask you if a couple they are fighting against each other, we just tell them what to do will they do it. Na tena nipulize hivi. Kama watu wawili ambao wamewana wanapigana na wamekuja kwako kwa sababu ya mzozo huo na uwaombe tu, je, umetatua? Answer me. Will they do it if you just tell them repent and forgive each other? Afija tu na asemu naambia tubuni, umeombea, muende mpendani. Watafanya hivi? No. No. The reason is because they are so long here and you want them to go so high there, they won't change right away. Sababu ni kwamba wakati wamekuja kwako, wako chini sana. Wako chini sana na bado wako na safa, walikuwa chini. Na wanatoka kwako wakiwa bado chini. Haitawezekana waende nyumbani wapatane. The idea of counsel is first to help them understand where they are. Swala la ushauri ni kuwasaidia hawa wawili wasielewe wako katika hali gani sahihi and to accept the feelings of anger na wakubali sababu ama hiyo hali ya uchungu ambayo wako nayo or whatever feelings they have ama hizo hisia wako nazo and to guide them to see the consequence if they continue like that na uelekeze wakaweze kuelewa madhara itakayotokea kama wataendelea kuwa na hasira and to ask them are you willing to change na hatimaye waulize je mko tayari kubadilika and to ask them how you can change na mkawaulize mtabadilika na mnadhani The idea is to guide a person to understand the situation and to start to think about changing. Jambo hili ni kumfanya mtu aelewe ako kwa hali gani, akubali kama ataweza kubadilika na hatimaye aweze kuchukua mwingine. And the guidance to change step by step. Na utawashauri mabadiliko haya ikaweze kwenda hatua kwa hatua. Because people cannot change suddenly. Maana watu hawatabadilika tu ghafla. And also another idea is that when people have hurt feelings is that the hurt feelings would hinder them changing. Kila kuna mtu wako na uhusia chungu ndani ya moyo itawazuia kubadilika. When a couple are angry with each other it's very hard for them to to change. Hawa wawili wenye wako kwa ndoa kama wako na uchungu kwa mwingine ni vigumu sana hawa watu kubadilika mara moja. So the counseling is very important 
to accept that both the husband and the wife they both have hurt feelings. Ni katika ushauri ukishauri hao wenye ndoa wenye walikuwa wamekuwa sana ni lazima wafikishe kwenye hali ambayo wanakikubali na wawe katika hali ya kukubali inakibika. And they both have difficulties how to handle the problem. Na kujua ya kwamba hawa bado wawili wako na ugumu ya kutatua tatizo hilo. So when we accept the feelings and the difficulties they feel accepted and careful. Wanapokubali ile hali ambayo wako ugumu ambao wako itakuwa rahisi sasa wao wakisaidie. So two ideas in counseling. Sasa kuna mambo mawili ya muhimu katika somo hili la ushauri. The first is accepting the feeling and how can to soothe the feelings to soften the feelings. Swala la kwanza hapa ni kukubali hali ambayo wako ndani na namna wataweza kuipoesha hiyo hali. And then the next thing is to guide them step by step instead of teaching them to guide them step by step to change. Na swala linalofuata la pili ni kuwapatia mwelekeo ambao watachukua hatua kwa hatua. Wacha tu kusema nimewafundisha. Okay? Now I first talk about how to accept people's feeling and how to soften and soothe their feeling. Sasa hatua ya kwanza kwa ushauri sasa tumeanza ni namna utafanya hao watu wakubali hali ambayo wako ndani na hali nyingine ya kuwasaidia hiyo hali iweze kupoa. Now when a couple come to you or an individual come to you and he is full of anger or sadness or despair that what no matter what we say he still cannot hear it. Mtu mwenye hapo kwa ndoa akikuja kwako pengine ametandikwa na Bwana ama ametandikwa na mke anakuja akiwa na uchungu kabisa wenyewe hata hajielewi. So the, so the first thing we need to learn is to think about how these people might be feeling to feel the feeling of this person. Jambo la kwanza ambalo ninatakana ufanye ukianza kumhudumia huyu mtu anza kuona huyu mtu sahihi kulingana na hali yake anajisikia namna gani alafu uone kama unaweza kuingia kwa kiatu chake umsaidie apone kwanza and about feeling is very complicated na kuhusu hisia ni jambo ambalo litatanishi for instance someone has a divorce he can have a number of feelings kwa mfano kama mtu amekwisha talaki ametoka kwa ndoa ako na hisia aina nyingi. He might have anger or despair or sadness. Anaweza kuwa na hasira, ako na wasiwasi, ako na hali ya uchungu, ako katika upweke. Or he has been hurt. Ama amejeruhiwa sana. Or he may be happy. Ama na mwingine anaweza kuwa amefurahi kwa sababu yeye hey, nimetalaki sasa niko sawa. He is happy because the spouse has been causing him to suffer for a long time and now the spouse leaves so this person is more free. Huyu mtu amefurahi kwa sababu alikuwa anaishi na mtu ambaye alikuwa anamsumbua sana, pengine anampiga na amefaulu kutoka huko. Kuna uwezekano sasa anafurahi. Na huyu anamwambia rudi tu huko. Patie nafasi kwanza. And we don't know the all the feelings of a person just by listening to what he said. Hatuwezi kujua huyu mtu hisia zake ni nini kwa kusikia tu vile anasema. We have to ask questions. Tunahitaji kumuuliza maswali. But we can roughly tell the feelings by looking at the face and listening to the voice of the person. Na wakati unaongea na mtu ukimshauri tunashauriwa ya kwamba unamwangalia kwa uso na unaangalia vile sauti inatoka. Mwingine anajaribu na shida pale mzee. Ya kwa Okay. So we guide the person with a number of questions. Tunamwelekeza mtu muadhiriwa na maswali kadhaa. So the person will start to understand the problem and uh, what the problem is how the problem is affecting him or her ili mtu aweze kuelewa shida na namna hiyo shida inamdhuru and what are some possible way to solve the problem 
Na njia gani ambayo itamwezesha kutatua shida? And can he or she do these things to solve the problem? Na je, huyu anaweza fanya mambo hayo mmemwekeza kutatua shida? What are some hindrances stopping him or her to do it? Alafu tena tuulize ni vizuizi gani ambavyo vinaweza mzuia asitatue shida? So we guide a person to know the problem and how to solve it and whether he can do it. Tunamwelekeza mtu kujua shida na aelewe namna ya kuitatua. Maybe for the person to take up the responsibility himself or herself to solve the problem. Maanisha ni unaelekeza huyu mtu afike katika kiwango cha mwenyewe kuchukua hatua ya kutatua shida si wewe kwanza na unamalizanga shida but we are not commanding or telling the person what to do na sisi katika ushauri hatumfanyi huyu mtu hatumwambii huyu mtu kile cha kufanya we are guiding the person to understand the importance to change his behavior tunaelekeza huyu mtu mpaka afikie kiwango cha kuona maana ama muhimu wa kubadilisha hali yake. Now sometimes a person says I don't know what to do. Then we can say would you like me to give you some suggestions? Wakati mwingine mtu atakuuliza atakwambia na mimi sasa sijui hata nifanye nini. Akikwambia akikuuliza kile cha kufanya rudi kumuuliza swali. Ungependa nikwambie kile ambacho unaweza fanya? And then we can ask the person, do you think this method would be helpful? Alafu unarudi kumuuliza, unafikiria kile ambacho nimekuambia kitakuwa cha msaada? Okay. So, now do you understand these steps in counseling? Unaelewa hatua hizi kwenye ushauri? Instead of telling the person what to do, badala ya kuambia mtu kile cha afanye, guide the person to to find possible solutions and then and have a plan to uh, put this plan uh, this solution in action una sisi tunaelekeza mtu apate suluhu ambayo inaweza msaidia kutoka katika hiyo hali ya shida okay now i'm going to you put in a real example in a real situation sasa nataka niweze kuwaleta katika hali halisi for instance, someone says, I always have this evil thoughts in my heart. I always, when I look at a woman, I always have lust. And a person comes to you for counseling. Then, how do we respond? The first thing we can say, well, with this problem of the lust, how does it make you feel? Jambo la kwanza ambalo utaanza nalo ni kumuuliza swali, na hii shida ya kuwa na tamaa ukimuona mke inakuacha ukijihisi namna gani? It might say it makes me feel guilty and weak and I can do nothing. Huenda akujibu ya kwamba inanifanya na kumukiwa na kuwa mdhaifu alafu na shindwa nifanya nini and then we can say yes i understand i know that because you know you find that this sin is over overwhelming you so you find it hard to overcoming and so you feel guilty and you feel weak utarudi kumambia ni kweli kwa sababu ya dhambi inakufanya unakuwa mdhaifu na jukumu unabaki umesononeka and you might lose hope and say, well, I cannot do anything for God because I'm too weak. Now, because this person is coming for help, his emotion might not be very strong. We don't have to spend a lot of time calming his emotions. And now if someone, the wife just left, then he's maybe very angry or anxious, then we have to have time to calm him down. Then we can accept his feeling and, and know and we can say, I know it's very hard when your wife uh, ran away from you and you now feel very unhappy. 
lazima tukubali hali ambayo wako ndani tukimwambia ni kweli na jua mkwata ni kwata na lazima kweli unasikia uchungu na huna furaha so let the person talk about his feelings kuhusu mtu aweze kusema hisia zake now we come back to the first person who has a lot of lust sasa tunarudia huyu mtu wa kwanza ambaye hapo na tamaa nyingi ya usinifu after we accept his feeling of weakness and guilt tukisha kubali hisia zake za kujiona mdhaifu na kuwa hana nguvu we can comfort him by telling him god is very happy that you come here for help Tunaweza kumuhimiza ili ajisikie ameanguka kwa mikono mizuri kwa kumwambia, "Eh ndugu, Mungu alifurahi kwa sababu umekimbilia mikono zetu upate msaada." And God is very happy when we come to him and confess our sins and ask him to forgive us. Na Mungu anafurahi sana wakati tunaenda kwake na ukiri dhambi zako na utupu. Now when I add this thing, uh, this phrase, God is very happy when you confess your sins. God is very happy is very important to say this. Yaani katika maongezi yako lazima ni jambo hili ya kwamba Mungu anafuraha sana. Ni la muhimu sana kutumia wakati kama wewe kama mtu amekwambia. I hope you you write this down. If I just tell him confess your sin and God will forgive you. It's very different. Ona hili jambo ni tofauti sana na ni kama la la kushusha mtu mtu akikujia kwenye hali hiyo na unamwambia eh sasa tupu tu uache dhambi hiyo ni tofauti na vile unazaambia mtu wewe Mungu amefurahi sana kama unaweza tupu dhambi if i tell him you know god is sad for you too he he wants to help you and if you confess your sins to him he's very happy and he'll forgive you okay. can you just tell the difference ukiambia mtu Mungu amefurahi sana na ukiweza kutubu dhambi zake mbele zake ana, anaenda kukusamehe ni tofauti na vile unazaambia mtu tu eh ndugu sasa tubu tubu dhambi can you tell the difference unaelezea tofauti yes the difference is that he knows God is happy i come back to him for help and God will forgive me and help me tofauti ambayo iko ni kwamba huyu jamaa ataanza kujitia moyo na kuelewa kwamba kumbe nikirudi kwa Mungu na nitubu Mungu amefurahi that has grace in it and then the law to tell him to pray but first the grace God is happy when you come to him sasa hapa sheria sheria ni kwamba kuja kuja kwa Mungu tubu na neema hapa ni kwamba Mungu amefurahi kama utatubu if we just tell him you go and repent that is the law tukimwambia tu nenda utubu hiyo ni sheria and grace always makes people feel uplifted and strengthened. And then after the prayer of confessing the sin that we can say God forgives you now when you truly repent of your sins. And then we can ask him, do you want to do something about this lust? We I love it na rudi kuuliza. Sasa uko na jambo unaweza tena kufanya kuhusiana na hii tamaa. This is asking him, does he, you know, does he want to do it? Does he want to change it? Hii ni kumuuliza uone kama ako tayari kubadilika. Now if he says I don't have much motivation akikwambia sisikii msukumo mwingi and then we can say can i tell you what the bible tells us about our sins akikunaweza sasa kurudi kumuuliza je naweza kuambia kile biblia inasema kuhusu dhambi it's good to ask for permission can i tell you what the bible talks about you know ni vizuri sana kuomba ruhusa kabla hujaanza maandiko akuruhusu ndio aanze kumwambia and then if he says yes then we can say You know the Bible does say that when we confess our sin God will forgive us but the sins does have consequences. Wakati atakubali sasa utamwambia Biblia inasema tukikiri dhambi zetu Mungu unamwaminifu atatusamehe na pia arudi na uweze kueleza kuhusu madhara ya dhambi. Have you noticed that the sins are destroying your life, are ruining your life? 
Alafu sasa unamueleza so unajua hizo dhambi ya tamaa ya uzinzi inaharibu maisha yako. This is guiding him to understand the truth that when we sin even when we confess our sins God will forgive us but there are bad consequences. Sasa hapo utakuwa unamuelekeza apate kuelewa kwamba kumbe ni kikili dhambi zangu Mungu ananisamehe na hizi dhambi ziko na madhara zake. Okay so we ask him again. Are you willing to do something about to change this habit of sin? Sasa unamuuliza ya kwamba uko tayari kukubali kutubu ili uweze kuepuka dhara hili la dhambi. And then we will ask him uh, what are some ways that you can overcome this sin. Alafu unamuuliza ni njia gani nyingine unafikiria inaweza kufanya ukashinde dhambi. He may say well read the bible and pray and uh, and, and pray to God for strength. Anaweza kujibu akakwambia eh si ni bora nisome biblia alafu Mungu atanipa nguvu. Then we can say very good. So you know that is good so you can do it. Una utarudi kumwambia eh kumbe ni vizuri sana kumbe naelewa hivyo. Sasa tunaanza kufanya hivyo. And then he says read the bible then we ask him how can you read the bible? We want to find out how. How can you read the bible for strength? Akikwambia kusoma biblia utamuuliza na utasomaje biblia ili kupata nguvu and also we ask him how then how do you pray to have strength to overcome the sin alafu tena na kumuuliza ni vipi uta utasoma biblia ili kushinda kupata nguvu so we want to go into detail of how to solve the problem ili tuweze kuingia katika kidini kabisa namna kutatua shida and then we can also ask how about when the temptation comes what can you do Alafu narudi tena kuuliza anajaribio likikuja tena utafanya nini? He might say some ways he can overcome the temptation. Anaweza kueleza njia zingine tofauti za namna ya kushinda jaribio. Whenever he says something right then we say good. Then how can you do it? Akikwambia jambo lolote nzuri unasema eh hey, ni sawa. Sasa utaanza kulifanya vipi? And then we can also say can, would you like me to tell you there are some other ways that is helpful too? Na unarudi kumuuliza je, unajua mtu ambaye anaweza kusaidia vizuri? And then we can suggest to him how he can avoid the temptation, how he can overcome the temptation. Allah sasa anamuelezea mbinu za yeye kushinda majaribio. And then for each point we tell that we ask him, do you know, uh, do you think you can do it? Na kila hatua unamuuliza je, unafikiria unaweza? Instead of just telling him to do it, we we'll ask do you think you can do it at home? Badala ya kumwambia tu fanya, unarudi kumueleza unafikiria unaweza fanya. So the process is to guide him understand the consequences, to guide him to find a ways and guide him to make up his mind to do it. Hatua ni kumueleza namna ya kukubali, kumueleza namna ya kukubali na vile anaweza fanya. And then we need to ask him too how to follow up. So how can we make sure that you are following God, how can we, you know, uh, be sure that you are doing this so that you are not falling back into sin again? Atua nyingine tamambia ni vile kile anahitaji kufanya ni tuwe na wakika hata rudi katika gami yote. And what are some plans that we can have? Some plans. Na ni mipango gani zingina mazo tuweza kuwa nae? And how can we also, when you see some progress, that you can appreciate yourself, I'm progressing now. Na ikiwa utaona maendeleo mazuri ya yeye kubadilika unamshukuru. Okay, so now do you understand now the difference between counseling and just teaching? Umeambisha elewa tofauti yoko kati ya kushauri na kufundisha? Yes. Why do we need to counsel? Ni kwa nini tuweze kufundisha? Tunahitaji kukuelekeza. Now for this we can have a teaching you know like a group of people teach them how to overcome lust but what's the point of counseling this person that he will build up this way of overcoming his lust and I say na kwamba kuna hili mwisho wa juma hili hapo na wakundi ambao watakuwa nafundisha namna ya kushinda dhambi na hapa sasa nauliza ni vipi tutawaelekeza watu hawa waweze kushinda the point is when we teach, some people can do it, but some people cannot do it. 
Hapa ni point kwamba tukifundisha kuna watu wanazafanya na wengine wasifanye kile tumefundisha. And some people they just keep falling in their sin and they want to find out what happened and guide the person to find a solution. Na watu wanapatikana tu katika dhambi na sasa tunahitaji tufuatilie tuone solution. So the difference here is to listen to the person, understand where he is and guide him from where he is to improve. Hapa sasa ni kuelewa mtu, kuelewa hapo katika hali gani na kumwelekeza kwa kila anayetaki kufanya. And we can also train people in the church to do counseling to people. Na pia makanisa yetu ni nzuri tuweze kuelimisha watu swala hili la kushauri wasaidie kushauri watu. But it's very important to to, to be aware these are some things we want to avoid in counseling. Okay, so you can write this down. This is something we want to avoid. Number one is neglecting the feeling of the person. Or saying that you don't have to feel that way. Ama kumshambulia kwamba unahitaji kukaa hapo na sioneka tu uko na shida. Ivele la shida. And number two we want to avoid accusing the person because you have done this thing wrong so you have this consequences. Jambo lingine ambalo tunahitaji kuepuka nalo katika kushauri ni kuwashambulia watu watu kwa watu kama watu eh umefanya hii. Okay, number three, we want to avoid just teaching them what to do. We want to know where they are and guide them step by step to change. Okay, so um, now I'm just this is very brief introduction to counseling in one hour. Okay. Do you have any quick question? I want to say that this is not easy to learn. But if you try to a few things remember to respond to the feeling of to accept and to respond to the feeling of the person. To guide the person to understand the root of the problem. To guide the person to understand the consequence of the problem. To guide a person to find ways to solve the problem. And to also find out whether this person can carry out this action to, uh, to, to solve the problem. And we want to encourage the person and support this person when he's working on it. Okay, so if you start to do it, then you can, you know, you start to learn it. Okay, and you can ask me in the future too if you have, you know, you face difficulty in this. It's good to train a number of people in your church that can counsel people. And counseling can be used in evangelism and helping the people to love God more, to obey God more, and helping the people to serve God more. It's also helpful in resolving problems in a church or in a home or, or other places. Okay, any question? Okay, if not, we'll conclude with the prayer.
you have any final question, thank you. Because you care about us, you take time to listen to us and respond to us. You are caring God. Help us to be caring to people. First, help us to be caring to our spouse and our children. That we listen to them and care about them. Ili tuwasikize na kuwajali. And we can have build up a good relationship with them. Ili tuwe na usiani ulio safi na wao. Lord, help us to serve you better. Bwana, tusaidia kutumikia vya ma. Give us patience. Tupe subira. And motivation from the love of God. Na mskumo wa kukupenda yu bwana. To serve you any time. Ili kutumikia wakati wote. And you are very happy when we serve you. Na bwana unafurai sana tunapo kutumikia. Anything we do for you, you are very happy. Tujote tunacho kufanya bwana yu afurai. Please strengthen the pastors and the workers here. Na bwana watie mbuvu wachungaji na watendakazi yu wapa. Use our life mightily. Tumia bwana uhaiwetu kwa uku. Praise you. Thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Now some people may say, thank you. Some people may say, why it takes so much time to counsel? What we need to say, my boy, need me as if I do as a child. Now if people are willing to listen to you, you can just teach. And what we give our people to do, to 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 skiz, to have a foundation. The point of counseling is that because some people have problem overcoming. Their sins or their own problems. So I la ku hili la ushauri ni kwamba watuwe kwa kona shida na wako na ugumu wa kutatua shida zao njema. Or they don't have the motivation to follow God. Na pia wengi na hawa na muskumo wa kufata mungu. Or they have overwhelming problems they cannot handle. Ama wako na shida ku amba wengi wa wezi pimudu. Then we can counsel them and guide them. Na sasa tunaweza kuwa shauri na kuwa elekeza. Okay, so there, there's a place for teaching, there's a place for counseling.